friends, it's your favorite messy hair YouTuber trying to make this work. When I moved away from home, I promised my family it would just be for one year. Pretty soon though, one year turned into 10 years. Well, that escalated quickly. See you next year. Peace. Oh, did I say one? I meant 10. Obviously, we grew apart during that time, but I still sent them half my salary every single month. Parents be like, wow, it's like getting paid to have a kid without having a kid around. Okay, girl, but where did you go? Usually they'd send me excited voices notes when they received my money, but a few months passed where I didn't hear a peep from them, just the occasional thumbs up emoji. I started to get worried and decided to fly home and surprise them. It was long overdue. You see, I'd been working as a maid for a super rich family, and not once had they let me take a holiday. So what did you do in those 10 years you spent in Europe? I was a maid! For 10 years, they kept me captive. I cleaned toilets and made them fruit platters for breakfast. And told them that my dad was sick and that I needed to rush home. For all I knew, that could even be true. I expected them to tell me to go straight away, but instead they told me I couldn't leave and that if I dared to, they'd fire me. So I got fired. Whoa! What do you mean, take a day off? I know your parents could be very sick, perhaps dying. But who will do our dishes? I was gonna make a little triangle in our toilet paper. Ugh, that sucks. They gave me one hour to pack up all my stuff, say bye to the kids, and get out. I couldn't believe it. Now I was even more excited to get home to my family. Y'all ruthless. I used up the last of my savings to buy the plane ticket, but I knew once I got home I could live with my parents and they would take care of me. Except... When the taxi pulled up outside my parents' address, something didn't seem right. My dad loved gardening, but the garden looked like a wreck. Panic shot through my body. Something must have happened to him. I knew no one was in because the house was in darkness. I decided to just try the door in the hope that it would open and- <laughs> Gotcha. I walked right in, and I'm not joking, it smelled like someone had died in there. I covered my nose and ran into the other two rooms in the house, but the place was deserted. Then I heard a shuffling sound, and my heart froze. My parents were still here after all. I turned around and said, surprise, I'm home! Except instead of seeing my parents standing there, I was face to face with a huge, hairy guy. I screamed and asked what he was doing in my house. And before I could say anything more, he started running. Hey, I'll call the police! Bro, what do you mean you call? the police you're a homeless person who just took over my parents house what have you done with them that would be terrifying you go to your parents house after 10 years and find this dude he stopped running and came back up the path then he laughed and said and nobody lived here a month sweetie i moved in when i saw the place was deserted finders keepers right i couldn't believe it where were my parents i had a really bad feeling had they just abandoned me what First of all, that's illegal. And this is a real thing, it's called squatting. Some homeless people will see a vacant house and then just move their self in. Ain't nobody live here, it's mine now. I looked around the room and noticed there were some envelopes lying on the table. They had my handwriting on them. The guy saw me looking at them and said someone had been sending money to the house and how sweet it was of them. I had to get to the police. My parents could be in danger. I don't know why, but I decided to look around just to make sure my parents weren't tied up somewhere. Oh, this dude living the life. Yeah, I found an abandoned house. Oh, did I mention I get money in the mail every month for living here? She been working, giving half her paycheck to some bum who stole her parents' house. The place was filthy, but seeing as I'd spent the last 10 years as a maid, I got to work and started cleaning the place. What do a maid and a hobo have in common when they see a dirty house? It's free real estate. Hours later, the guy came back, and as soon as he was inside, I asked him what he knew. He said he'd never even seen my parents and that this place had been empty when he moved in. I didn't believe him at all. He looked scared and pulled out his phone to call the police. What are you gonna tell the police? That's like me going to Walmart to steal a TV. And when they catch me stealing, I'll be like, stop right there. I can call 911 right now. That's my dad's phone. I shouted at him. Then he looked at me and said, um, well, it was here when I moved in, so I just sort of claimed it. I asked him about the thumbs up emojis and he said he was just being polite. And then he said, oh, so you're Anna then. <laughs> Thanks for the money, doll. You've been a real help. Oh, I don't know how she's just not like losing her mind right now. Feels me, this dude finna die real quick. I tried calling my mom's number and suddenly I heard a phone ringing, dug around in a sleeping bag and pulled out my mom's phone. I gave up. I'd just have to go to the police. I was too scared to call them in front of this guy. So I told him I'd go try to find my parents and I'd pop back around soon. I ran out of there with my suitcase and then I called the police who said they'd be right over. I decided I'd go speak to the neighbors in the meantime, see if anyone remembered me and could tell me anything about my parents. 
This dude obviously ate them and absorbed their power. But there was no one around. In fact, it looked like a ghost street. Had everyone just moved out? I remembered my parents had mentioned they might move because there were rumors all the houses here were going to be torn down. Well, maybe that was what had happened. Maybe they just moved? The police arrived 30 minutes later and they went into the house to have a word with the hairy guy. After a while, they came back out and said this whole neighborhood was due to be torn down any week now so those squatters could do whatever they liked. But it's my house, I said. The policeman looked bored and said I could come down to the station and file a proper report. What? No way. That's how mafia works. <laughs> not real life, not the law. He has their cell phones. What did he do with the people? Why wouldn't my parents tell me if they moved? This made no sense. When we got to the station, I told them my name. They typed something into their computer and looked up at me, confused. Sorry, ma'am, but it says here you live abroad. Um, duh. But I was back now and I didn't have time for this. Are you from Europe? Oh no, we can't help you here. Sorry. And when I gave their names, they said they'd left the country a couple of months ago and therefore they couldn't help me. I made quite a scene and eventually they asked me to leave or they'd have to call the chief police officer. Who the heck is just gonna fly, leave the country? Oh, we're gonna look for our daughter. Oh, but we're gonna leave our cell phones in our old house. You know, with the service and the messages keep going through them. Smash like you're confused. I walked the streets for a bit before finding a little cafe. So I flopped into a seat by the window and just ordered coffee after coffee while I tried to figure out what to do. I heard someone screaming. I looked outside and there was an old woman by the window staring and pointing at me. I quickly went out to see if she was okay and she started praying and shaking her head. The ghost of Anna is here. Oh lord, why? She kept muttering to herself over and over again and then I recognized her. It was my grandma's best friend. My grandma had died when I was little so we'd lost touch with her over the years. I tried to calm her down and told her I wasn't a ghost, that I was alive and I needed her help. Weird stuff starts to happen when you drink five cups of coffee. I would be seasoned like me after two cups. I told her I'd been living abroad and had just come home because I hadn't heard from my parents in ages. She then told me that she'd seen my parents about two months ago and they'd been hysterical saying I died. So they'd left to go and collect my body. She said no one had seen or heard from them since, but that there had been a rumor going around that they decided to stay abroad because they were too sad to come home without me. This was crazy. I was clearly alive. Why would my parents think I died? This just keeps getting crazier and crazier. Like what is going on here? Did did y'all just abandon your phone? Sorry, we've become social vegans. Why did they think she died? Maybe she got an Android? <laughs> Mother and father started sending the text and they were green. How will I know if she got them? There's only one explanation. She died. But why did they think I was dead when I was messaging them this whole time? I asked her and the old lady looked at me and said, your boss sent a letter to them saying that there had been some kind of accident and you sadly passed away. Wow, pure scumbaggery. Y'all clean the mafia's house or something? Why are these people so sketchy? This way she'll be our maid forever. Why would my boss do that? I mean, he didn't treat me that well, but he wasn't cruel. I didn't get it. I needed to call my boss and ask him about this. He didn't pick up though. I tried dozens of times, but he just ignored what did I expect. He'd fired me. Suddenly things started to make more sense. The way my boss had been so quick to fire me and told me not to bother coming back. Why had I let him treat me like that? But to tell my parents I died? That was too much. He could go to prison for this. I left the old lady and ran back to the police station. I told them the whole story and then I gave them my boss's number and asked if they could call him. Oh uh, ma'am, this is the Wendy's drive through We don't have anything like that on the menu. They could see I was getting frantic and finally they started to take me seriously. The chief assured me that they'd do some investigating and then I gave them my number and hurried back to my parents' house. I wanted to ask the hairy guy some more questions. As I ran home, I couldn't stop thinking about my boss. How could he do this? My poor parents. How dare she leave? Now who's gonna cut my melon every morning? My wife can't even make toast. I noticed the hairy guy was sitting outside with a woman who I assumed was Margot. Luckily, it was dark by then, so I managed to walk along without being seen. They were chatting quite loudly, and what they said shook me to my core. To be honest, I ain't sure she believed what I was saying about us being squatters. What if she figures out her parents left the country because they thought she died? We need to get on the run again. Maybe we can try our luck again in the next town. Then Margot laughed and said, I can't believe they fell for it. It was too easy, wasn't it? Let's just pack up quickly and get out of here before the police get onto us. I couldn't believe it. So they'd done this, not my boss. They were criminals. What? So some homeless couple 
couple just show up to their doorstep and they're like, your daughter, she's dead. Why don't you go to Europe and see her? Don't forget to leave your cell phones, mail key, credit card, social security number, and don't bother canceling any of your utility bills. I could take care of the house if you wanted me to. Scumbags! I was too scared to confront them, so I quickly called the police and asked them to come to my parents' address. They arrived just in time. The hairy guy and Margot were almost all packed up and were heading out to an old beat-up car, which I recognized as my dad's old car. Of course. Well, they didn't make it any further than the garden path before the police arrested them. They'd called my old boss, and of course, he'd known nothing about this and hadn't seen my parents. I needed to find them, but before that, I got to watch the police arrest the hairy guy and that Margot woman. They kept shouting at me, but I just stood there grinning. <laughs> oh man, must feel good. Y'all some scumbags. I can't believe our parents just let everything. They're probably like, what's the point of a phone if we can't contact our daughter? They didn't even check with anybody. Does she not have friends or anybody in Europe that they can call or text or like confirm that this happened? Man, these stories are so weird. I wanted to beat myself up over the fact that I left to surprise my parents, but at the same time, thank God I did because otherwise, who knows what those criminals would have done next. As it turns out, my parents weren't their first victims. They'd done this to three other families. How you gonna scam that many families and still be homeless? <laughs> Some people just love living that scumbag life. You do what you gotta do when you're too stupid to flip burgers at McDonald's. And it didn't take long to track down my parents. Once the police here alerted the police over there, they managed to find them. They were staying in some kind of homeless shelter because they'd run out of money and couldn't afford to fly home. When I called them, they didn't believe it was me. They just kept screaming and I told them I was safe at home and that I was going to buy their ticket so they could come back. I have never been more happy to see my parents in my entire life. When I saw them walking through the arrivals gate, I just broke down into tears. They looked completely broken. It was a pretty emotional reunion and not what I'd expected when I'd flown back two days before. Oh man, what a roller coaster. I feel like this mess could have been easily prevented. Like you spent 10 years in a country and not managed to make a single friend or contact or somebody that your parents can contact in case you can't like oh it doesn't make it uh, it's such a mess what a crazy twist of events but at least we're all alive and finally back in the same place again at least you got this sick story out of it you know that's what i think of whenever something stupid happens but anyway that's all for today i hope you guys enjoyed this video comment below and let me know what you would do if you found someone living in your house and if you guys enjoyed make sure to hit that like button the Make sure you turn on notifications. Click, click, and subscribe, join the wolf pack. Oh, I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.